In the American Wild West, the gun ruled, and that gun was usually a six-shooter revolver. Today, replicas of those revolvers can take you back to Dodge City, and they do, at cowboy shooting competitions. It's a chance to engage in a little old-fashioned gun slinging, for old times' sake. With its six-shot cylinder and innovative cocking mechanism, the 1873 Colt was carried by the likes of Jesse James. They start these authentic replicas by shaping and machining the gun's frame. A computerized blade carves the cylinder. It cuts slots for the ammunition and notches for rotating the cylinder after a shot is fired. A technician files down rough edges so the parts will fit together perfectly. He then screws the curved grip and the trigger guard to the frame. He assembles the wooden grip casing to the metal back strap and attaches them to the grip. Once he confirms it's a good fit, he removes the casing and writes the gun's serial number inside. He stamps a matching number onto the grip and polishes it and the gun's frame to a glossy finish. He now rolls the model number and other identifying information onto the gun's barrel. To add a bit of flourish, an artist engraves designs copying the artwork of an original Colt. Another worker now dips the parts in hot salts, then in cold water. A reaction occurs that both hardens the parts a bit and tints them. In this case, they turn a bronze color. This is called color case hardening. The grip and trigger guard have been removed from the gun frame for color casing. This makes it easier for the technician to install the cartridge loading gate on the frame. He files down the mechanism for rotating the cylinder to make the dimensions perfect. He then inserts a bushing and a pin in the cylinder's center. He uses that pin to install the cylinder in the gun frame. The pin will also serve as the axis for the cylinder to revolve on. He slides a couple of test slugs into the chambers to confirm the gap between the cylinder and the gun frame is spot on. He then fits the gun barrel to the frame and, using a special measuring rod, he checks the alignment of the cylinder and barrel. He tightens the barrel to the gun frame using a stick as a lever. The technician aims the assembled gun and eyeballs the alignment of the barrel to the frame. Once he's certain the configuration is right on target, he installs the gun's hammer and trigger. He pops the cylinder back into the gun frame and inserts the rod for ejecting spent ammunition. He screws a spring into the side of the hammer and cocks it in its three different positions to verify that it's in working order. He then reattaches the grip and trigger guard. He assembles a flat spring to the curved grip. This is the main spring. It transfers energy from the trigger to the hammer to cause the revolver to fire. Then it's over to a government testing facility called the Proof House. Behind bulletproof glass, special equipment fires ammunition at three times the usual operating pressure. If the gun can handle this, it's deemed safe to operate. After a few more parts have been color cased, this revolver replica is ready for its target market. And that would be history buffs, who are interested in a real blast from the past.